Today on the table, I brought you the M2R Pro Warrior. This is a baton flashlight by Olight. There was some sort of communication error because when they asked if I wanted to take a look at a flashlight, I thought this was a weapons light. I don't have any experience with baton lights. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know what a baton flashlight should or should not have on it, so we're just going to wing it. I'm going to roll in the stats right here. But since I already got the light, and I already promised I'd do a video, I gotta do a video. Regardless what you may or may not think of Olight with their aggressive marketing strategy and that, they've been supporting the 2A community more than any other manufacturer I know. As of recently, Guns and Gadgets just had a financial problem, and Olight did a flash sale. All the proceeds being donated directly to Guns and Gadgets. Uh, there's a video, I'll put a link in the description where, uh, Kodiak Boy 64 talked about it, and you can check it out for yourself and see what's been going on. They've been one of the largest sponsors of my channel. Once a month, they send me a product worth eh, somewhere north of $100. Uh, they will be running a flash sale on this. Uh, I'll run the date right here. Make sure to check that out. So out of this baton flashlight, this is how it's going to work. So right here's a button. And right here's a button. The button on the back, if you push it, you go from high to what they call turbo. Two different settings by on how hard you push the button. The front button, if you hold it, you get moonlight, which would be for like reading something and you don't want to be spotted. Then if you keep holding the button, it'll run through the different settings. Now let's say you press the back button, and then you tap the front button, that gives you strobe. Now I do have a way to test this because actually my dad uses these lights quite a bit. As you know, I drive truck and he goes over the trucks before they... Oh, and it stays on strobe too if you put it on the strobe mode, so then you got to turn it back off. In the morning, he goes and checks out all the trucks and he burns through lights quickly because they get dropped, stepped on, and then he starts all the trucks while, except for mine, because no one touches my truck. When he got me that truck, he was actually like, I'm sorry, this is all I got right now. I'll upgrade you in the future. I checked over the truck and I'm like, no, don't change a thing. This truck is absolutely perfect. What it is, is the body came with a cat Caterpillar engine in it and it grenaded somewhere around 120k. One of their mechanics must have been like, I tell you what, I got a Cummins right over there. I can just wire that in, and it's an old Cummins, so everything's mechanical. There is no computer at all on the engine. Like, if we had a solar flare or an EMP, that truck would still run as long as I could get enough people behind me to push it so I could pop start it. And no one touches it because they're not used to that. It's got no glow plugs. It's got no intake heater. I think the negative degree 20 weather startup's really easy. It's a simple procedure. All you do is you crank on the key and the motor will start cranking over slow to like rear, 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 rear. Then once it picks up speed to where it sounds normal, then you start adding throttle. You add throttle until you hear a noise that could only be described as like a high rise building falling down. When that happens, you back off the throttle and you bring it up to about 1,900 RPMs. And then once the whole parking lot's full of smoke and your soda stops doing donuts in your cup holder, then you can get out of the vehicle. It'll run on its own. You can go sit in your car until it's warmed up and the parking lot clears out of smoke, and then you're good to go. People just don't know what to do with that. I think it's awesome. Unfortunately, with a mechanical throttle, like newer diesel trucks, they have a computer-controlled throttle and it has a slight delay in it. This way you can't bounce off of the, acceler or the injector pump. So anybody that doesn't know my truck or they haven't used it before, hold on one second. So anybody that knows my truck or hasn't used it before because the engine came out of a much larger vehicle and it was shoved into my truck, the clutch pedal is really, really heavy. I can slip the clutch a little bit because I'm experienced with it, but pretty much the clutch is either in or out. There's probably 180 pounds of resistance on the clutch pedal. And with a mechanical throttle, if you jump the clutch, you go back and then you come down and you hit the throttle, but then the acceleration of the truck pulls you off the throttle, but then the truck slowing down pushes you back forward, 
So anybody that tries to run my truck, every time they take off, they're like, and it just turns them into a milkshake. Boy, did I kind of go way off in left field. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to let my dad use this. If anything goes wrong with it or that, I will do an update video and it will be put through the harshest conditions. Negative degree 20 weather, it's going to fall, it's going to smash up against things. He was checking it out and he's like, he really likes the design. But like I said, he burns through lights quite a bit and he was just talking about like, oh, this is awesome because it's got the magnetic charger. I can just charge this right in my truck. It comes with a little case. It'll fit right on there. I can mount on my dashboard. And then I also got this little clip right here. So after I check over the truck, and just hook it on my pants, fire the truck up, and then I can go back under and make sure nothing's dripping or leaking out of the truck. And I do believe the setup's pretty good. Yes, Olight does use a confusing settings, or how would you even word that? Uh, comp, not even complicated settings. Most flashlights, it's on, off. To go through the different brightnesses in that, you've got to figure the flashlight out. But once you master how to use the settings, it's not that bad. Not at all. When you purchase it, this is the box that's going to come in. It's got this cool little thank you letter right there. Is it necessary? No, but it makes you feel good about your purchase. This box is magnetic. And it just makes you feel, when you're purchasing a flashlight over $100, and I'm pretty sure this one's over $100, I'll roll in the price right there. It's very important you feel good about your purchase and that you didn't get ripped off. So right after I got done making the video, I actually went to the P.O. box and in the P.O. box were these parts. So I guess there wasn't any miscommunication. This is an actual weapon light. This bracket goes on pretty decent. How you're gonna adjust is you're gonna pull it like this and then you can turn the knob. That's also how it slides on here. And this is a magnetic pressure switch. As far as a weapon light, it does feel fit comfortably, and I don't have to use a pressure switch on my scar, which I like a lot with a magwell hold. Because I don't know, I've just never been a fan of the pressure switches. But it does have this jagged teeth right here. And I don't really like that as a weapon light, because, you know, it could get snagged on your clothes or whatever. But other than that, yeah, looks alright. Uh, unfortunately, I can't put this on the scar and test it because I already promised this to Dad. And if I say something, I stick to my word. Clear, easy to follow instructions to get the little battery guard thing in there. Uh, what battery does this take? I know it says here somewhere. It's this big, nasty, rechargeable battery. It takes a 3.6 volt, 217.00. It's a 18 ohm rechargeable battery. Got a little O-ring on there to make this semi-waterproof. It's waterproof up to this step. I'll roll in a little spec. And it does seem really well constructed. Then there's this inside which had the instruction manuals which had a little tab that was labeled pull. I pulled and it just ripped off the box so apparently I was using that wrong. The clip on the case does have good retention. Pat it on the inside, a little Olight tag. A snap, so like if you're gonna do like my dad and attach it to your dashboard, you can just flip it over like that and you're good to go. Would I or would I not purchase this? Again, like I said, I just, I don't have a, I shouldn't say I don't have a re reason for baton flashlights. On my personal body, I just don't want that much space. Driving truck, even my wallet annoys me. And so then I pull it out of my pocket and I leave it in my truck and I wind up forgetting it in my truck constantly. My cell phone, because it is so useful, I will deal with the amount of pocket space that takes up, but I'm not happy about it. I'd much rather have a smaller cell phone, but you can't because they're smartphones now and they're like the size of Game Boys, but... So me, myself... If I actually wanted a baton flashlight, yes, I would get this. It seems to be very nicely made. Because I'm not into baton flashlights, or I just don't use them anyway, no, I wouldn't buy that, but it's not because it's a crappy product. Anyway, if 
Thank you for watching. If you like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. If you like to help support the channel, you can always click on my Patreon link. Don't forget to subscribe.